Today I'm going to be installing the tail flame lighting kit on my Freewing 70mm F22 Raptor. Now, in addition to being cool, the lighting kits that I install, whether they be landing lights, navigation lights, or in this case, tail flame afterburner lights, actually serve a functional purpose in helping me to keep orientation on the aircraft while it is in flight. Let's get to it. For this install, I'll need, of course, the tail flame lights, a screwdriver, a two-way splitter, a fishing line, and a transmitter to do the testing once everything is set up. There are two screws on the bottom of the aircraft that, you've already, that I've already removed here and here. They hold the cover for the access panel in place. So if we remove that cover, it is a very snug fit and you do everything you can to remove it without dinging the material and that gives us access to the power unit so now there's four screws holding the fan in carefully remove those four screws and then the fan unit itself this comes right out of the bottom of the aircraft now the lighting, this is an in-runner lighting drive and it'll attach to the base of the motor there. So temporarily, we're gonna just kind of sit this here now that we've got it detached. And we're gonna get these screws out of the way, how about that? And I chose to use this free wing tail flame lighting kit that actually is very well packaged but it is the twin light version. And the reason I chose this is because this is a single motor, but dual exhaust. This particular kit comes with multiple motor mounts, for all different size motors. And ours is probably going to be the smallest mount. Looks like a 30, so let's test fit that onto the back of motor, and it looks like a 30 is going to do it. This particular mount needs to go onto the back of the motor, and then the lights connect to those two holes right there. So we're going to put two screws in the back of the mount to secure the light to the mount. Now that the lights themselves are actually connected securely to the mount, we now need to disconnect the motor from the ESC so that we can feed the motor leads through this opening in the mount. Whenever I'm disconnecting a motor from the ESC, I try to disconnect and reconnect cables one at a time because of course it's important <laughs> that the cables are connected back to their respective uh, leads. So we're going to disconnect this first cable, feed it through the opening in the light, and then reconnect it. Disconnect the second lead, like so, and feed it through, opening in the mount, and reconnect it, the third lead and feed it through the mount bracket like so and then reconnect it to the ESC like so all three leads have been passed through the motor mount or the light mount so now we should be able to fit the light mount over the back of the motor. Only thing left to do as far as mechanically securing it to the plane is using a very small nut that I'm holding in my clamps because it's very small and a very small bolt. So we're going to feed the bolt through the mount like so. We hold the nut on the other side with the clamp like so and we just tighten that down. Just enough to snug it for right now. And now we're going to release the clamp. And I'm going to put a little bit of 
glue on the motor to kind of add a little bit of additional security to keep this thing from sliding around. So now, slip this more into place on the motor and tighten it down the rest of the way. So now that the wires are, or that the lighting unit is physically mounted onto the motor, the next step is to take our fishing line here and we're going to send it down through the channel where the wires for the speed control feed in. We'll feed that through. And then if we flip over the airplane, we should see the end of that fishing line coming through. Now in our kit, we have three wires, three cables that come in our kit. One is a cable is a splitter that actually combines the two lighting units into one. We have a servo splitter and we have the actual circuitry that connects the wiring or connects the lights to the battery and the ESC. So we're going to start with our actual splitter for the wires for the lights themselves hook that up to the end of our fishing line like so and then we're going to pull that back through and out of the cargo compartment making sure that the other end stays in the cargo compartment And then while we're up here, we can connect in our circuitry for the lighting. Connect that into the plug. And then our servo splitter is a servo connector here. Take our splitter, connect that lead from the lights into one side of our splitter making sure that it is nice and secure. And then the other side of the splitter is going to replace the throttle connector on our receiver. So our throttle is channel four, I'm sorry, channel three on our receiver. So we're going to go underneath here, going to grab channel three, we're going to unplug it from our receiver. And we're going to plug that cable that came out of channel three into the other side of this splitter. Plug that in there. Like so. And then the splitter itself now gets plugged into the throttle channel on our receiver or channel three like so. There we go. Now that we're back underneath the plane again, we have the cables that we pulled through with our fishing line. Go ahead and disconnect that from the fishing line. We don't need that guy anymore. And then these two connectors connect to the two plugs coming from the lights. So we go one light plugs into there, the other light plugs into there. And now our lights are connected to the receiver. So the last thing we need to do on the bottom of the plane is reinstall the fan unit that now has lights attached to it. I think that might work. So obviously we want to make sure that our wires are sitting, I mean our fan unit is sitting flat in the channel and that there's no play in it. So then we put our four mounting screws back in. Put our access cover back on. So the last thing to do is 